<laughs> All right. Hello, hello. We're going to talk through the... All right, so we got first pack, um, the important stuff. Shadow mages need to be kicked. Night bolts will just hit random players for a decent chunk of damage. And then um, the big thing that they'll do is a cast every 18 seconds. It's called Staring Shadow or something like that. And if it hits somebody, it's just a curse debuff that it puts on them. It slows them and does a heavy amount of ticking damage over time. And then other than that, the only real important mob in this pack is these Ritualists. So the Ritualists will apply um, a Dispellable debuff to somebody. I don't know why I can't... Oh, it's the... There's this weird line of sight bug right here. Uh, they'll do Tormenting Ray right here, where they target two random players and just do unavoidable damage to them for the next five seconds. So you want to keep those players topped up. And they'll put a Dispellable debuff out on somebody and you want to dispel it it's just a magic dispel um it puts like a little circle around them if you don't dispel it, then it blows up after five seconds so just make sure that you're dispelling that here we have another ritualist so there's that debuff that it applies it went to me and the rogue also if you get targeted by it you want to be pressing a defensive most of the time because it does hit pretty hard there's that dispelable debuff we just dispel the shaman Yeah, the Tormenting Ray is definitely the most dangerous thing. Um, because if you have a Tormenting Ray on you and then you get targeted by something else that's unavoidable or you don't interrupt one of the mobs that can cast on you, like stuff like that, that's where you'll end up dying. It's like you'll get comboed out by having the Ray on you and then also getting hit by a uh, targeted mechanic. So keep those players nice and healthy. Right. Um, here we have most of the same mobs besides this Web Mage. He's the new guy. So the web mage will just do um, this bursting um, cocoon. It'll go on a random player. It does a heavy amount of ticking damage over five seconds. And then when it expires, it does a ton of damage, like one-shot territory of damage. So you want to try to use everything you can to make sure that that player that's targeted by that mechanic is full health. Um, that way, by the end of it, when it explodes, as long as they have a defensive active, they will not die to it. So like here, it targets the mage. So I'm just going to keep pumping a bunch of healing into the mage to keep him nice and healthy and then if i can i want to try to like throw you know like a, an absorb or a heal right before it explodes that way because it's going to take one tick of damage right before it explodes again um just from the end of the the dot so you want to try to make sure that you are healing as much as possible other than that the web mages will just spam cast web bolt and we just want to interrupt that as much as possible because that also hits for a large amount of damage if it goes off there you can see it going on the tank twice and it got him down to like half HP just from the web bolt itself. Could be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure both packs on these boats are the exact same. Oh, this one has a commander on it actually instead of the shadow caster. Here we're just watching for those that bursting cocoon. It's on me, so I'm just going to paint up myself since I have two charges of it. And then like right before it explodes right here, I just shield myself and then I take a lot less damage. And the commanders just need to be interrupted. Um, they just do a cast every like 25 seconds, I think it is. And that just needs to be kicked. Other than that, they don't do too much. They they apply this bleed to the tank, so they're just a little bit heavier tank damage. And here we're pumping healing into the shaman, and then I power and shield him right before it goes off, and he pressed the defensive, so he lives. Now we have the boss. A couple important things here. Just kind of talk about it one thing at a time as it happens. So the first thing is going to be the obsidian beam that goes off. So obsidian beam, I'm going to avoid the stuff on the ground. It's going to move in a random direction. And also something that a lot of people don't know is when the beam starts, she does a tank buster at the same time. The start of the obsidian beam does unavoidable tank damage, and it's like a lot of unavoidable tank damage. 
Man, we'll kind of talk about these other mechanics as they happen again. I'm dying really badly. That was really, really bad. She's going to do another beam here. Looks like we're lagging out. Hopefully this... Yep, there we go. Alright, so the next thing is Collapsing Knight, you can see on my bars. So what this is going to do is target two random players. I believe it tries to prioritize ranged players. She's going to put this little debuff right here on the ground, and you want to move out of it. What you can actually do is see, like I did there, you can see when you're targeted by it ahead of time. So as a general rule, just as the Collapsing Knight goes out, try to um, already be moving. Because as long as you're in motion, you won't take damage from it. Because when it drops down on the ground, you will take a lot of initial damage. You're just going to teleport in the middle. We just uh, It lets you mount up now, and you just fly away until the cast is finished. You can collect these little orbs if you want. They just help you not get the debuff that kills you while you're flying around. And then now we fly back in, and the fight repeats itself. The only thing I didn't talk about is the Burning Shadows, so we'll do that in just a second. So we have Collapsing Knight. We'll see if we're targeted. There, it's on me, so I move out ahead of time so I don't take damage. Burning Shadows is going to apply a debuff to a random player. We dispel it, and then it puts a healing absorb on everyone that does damage over time. So we want to heal this off to of everybody as soon as possible. So you want to use, like, basically healing cooldowns for the each Burning Shadows. Or at least use, um, you know, big, like, healing burst healing. Um, get through it and there's the burning shadows we're gonna dispel it and then we need to move because of the collapsing night and then we need to finish healing off these absorbs and then we have the beam we're gonna have burning shadows after this what i'm gonna do here for pretty specifically i'm gonna dispel it then i'm gonna power it radiance mind blast and then just kind of spam smites and it'll go away on its own and then we move because the collapsing Two, shadow. One. Collapsing night. And there you could see I was late to moving. So I took one tick of damage from it. Now the beam's ending. She might do a burning shadows. This always sucks right before the fight ends. Okay, she didn't end up doing it. Sometimes she'll do a burning shadows right before you fly away. Which is really annoying because then everyone flies away and you can't get the healing absorb off them. So... You have to be extra careful about that overlap. If that does happen, you either need to be really quick about getting it off of people, or uh, you just have to hope that they don't die from the dot while they're flying around. Oh, it looks like we're down here. I was not even paying attention. All right, um, here we have a few mobs. We'll talk about the shadows first. So they apply this debuff right here that you can see on the shaman, and the rogue cloaked it off. Um, it's just a really heavy damage over time effect. It puts it on two players at a time. And then... Out of the Tacticians, they just do a frontal um, every so often. I believe it's always faced towards the tank. Here's that debuff that goes on two players, and we just keep them alive. Or if we get it, we press the defensive, like stuff like that. Yeah, the Tacticians don't really do too much, they just hit the tank and then do frontals. And then the other thing that the shadow does is this, um... Oh, he does this towards the end. Uh, he does, what is it, Dark Flow or something like that? It's just a really heavy, AOE, unavoidable AoE that he does to the entire group. A lot of the time you'll end up killing him before he ever does it. But when you're starting to do, like, hierarchies and stuff where the mobs have more HP, he will more than likely end up doing it at least once. So, you do want to be aware of that. Then we have the Dark Casters, which we talked about earlier. There's that dot on people, so we're just keeping them alive. We're dodging these swirlies that the shadow, that's also what the shadow does, is he throws down little swirlies under your feet, so keep an eye out for those. Those swirlies. Here goes that unavoidable AoE here shortly, and he's gonna die right before it goes off. Do you see it? Oh, tank went down. That's not good. Just paints up the rogue so that maybe he can live. I'll help get these off the mage. 
Can't fear the tacticians, of course. I'm going to grip him over here. Just flew right into the frontal. <laughs> Oh no, the mage still had aggro and died. He should have invised. That's so unfortunate. Oh well. Now, as we go in this building, um, a lot of the mobs that you'll see will pretty much be replicas of what we've already fought. It's just a matter of, like, what you have in the pack. So, like, here we have a lot of the... We have dark ca the dark caster, so we need to kick it. And then we have these unavoidable damage debuffs going out. Really, the main thing with all of these packs in this section of the dungeon, like this church area, is the, the shadows. Those are, like, the main... Those are the primary mobs, for sure. Now in each section, we're going to have a mini boss. This is the first one that we're going to be fighting. And she does Abyssal Blast, which will put a dot on a random player. So here it's going on the Shaman. This is like pretty much the same exact dot that the Shadows do, but it hits quite a bit harder. But it is only on one player, so that's the benefit. And then the only other thing she does is she will throw out a um, tank damage hit. Uh, like a tank buster. It's a big circle that's around the tank, and if you're in it, you will take damage also, and then you will also get feared. You can see how much more damage this debuff is doing to people. Okay, it's on the rogue. Now it's going to be on me, so I'm going to press defensive. They try to defile our Looks like we're going outside. This pack is pretty scary because there's two shadows, so you're going to get a lot more of the unavoidable debuffs on people. And you're going to get a lot more swirlies on the ground, so you want to watch out for those. I bet you can see we have four debuffs active. They are pretty desync though when they get initially pulled, so that's really nice. I'm just getting the debuffs more often. There we go, not too bad at all. And it looks like we're going to fly over to the next mini-boss. So this mini-boss, most people just fly directly down into it, basically. Mage is just uh, dying instantly. So this mini-boss has uh, tacticians with it, so it's going to do a lot of frontals towards the tanks. So you want to be really careful of the frontals. And then the other thing is she'll apply that same individual targeted dot. But then also, what this mini-boss does is... Um, she will do a unavoidable AOE to everybody. Uh, it's going to come up right here. AOE. It's the shadow, uh, shadowy decay. And you can see how much damage it's doing to me right now. So I'm in a health pot. And it just does... It's just an unavoidable damage like, AOE channel that she does to the entire group. So you just want to make sure that you have... That's what you want to use healing cooldowns for, basically. If you don't have a healing cooldown for it, it's going to hurt really bad. And then one player is pretty much always going to have a dot on them. So, like, right here, the rogue is going to have a dot AOE. while she does the AoE channel. So he's going to be, like, exceptionally in the most danger. There he used cloak. So you want to be extra careful. Like, if people aren't pressing defensives and they have it, you want to external them. Because the person with the, the dot debuff plus 
the AoE damage going off is gonna be really, really, really painful. They've taken the inn as a foothold, and a lieutenant leads them. And here we have more of the same mobs. We have the tactician for the frontals. We have the shadow mage that we're kicking, and then this last mini boss that we're gonna pull. And the last mini boss um, does all the bil abilities combined, so she will do the. Um, random dot on a player that does a lot of damage. She'll do the... I don't think she does the AoE channel, as far as I remember, but I guess we'll see. And then her unique ability is that um, she will throw an orb at a random player, and it's the same as like the boss mechanic orb that we'll see in just a bit. And you want to point it down this hallway so that it goes as far as it can. And then uh, use defensives once it blows up. So I'll demonstrate it in a second. So here's the orb. Targets a player. We move out of the way once it spawns. It flies down. And then it's going to blow up once it reaches reaches a certain distance. And we just take like an initial burst of damage. So the people that are in the most danger here is when the orb is actually going out. And they have a dot. So like right now the mage is in danger because he has a dot and the orb is flying away. Like, now I have it, so I need to press stuff to live. The rogue is definitely dead. What the rogue had there is if you do not dodge the orb, if you stand in it, especially in melee, like if, when it spawns, um, it's going to apply a stacking debuff to you, depending on how long you stand in it. And uh, it will definitely kill you. It's, a, it's just a super, super hard-hitting dot. And then, like, here, I'm the one in danger again because I have the dot. And and there, the, <laughs> the tank got hit by the orb again, like, stood in it. We got a kill, so we're all good. But like there, I had the dot debuff while the orb was traveling. So whoever has the dot debuff while the orb is getting sent out, that's the person that you want to heal the most. The, or like use externals or defensives and stuff, because that person is going to be by far in the most danger of getting kind of one shot by the orb when it explodes. And then now the boss pretty much does all of those abilities that we talked about with the mini bosses combined. So he's going to do the orb here he targets a player with the orb we move out of melee just a little bit the orb spawns we move out of the way and the orb blows up he's gonna hit Five, the tank with the four, tank buster three, two, this is gonna one. be rough and then he's gonna do shadowy decay which is the big aoe channel this is gonna be the heaviest hitting thing that you're gonna want to use healing cooldowns for and stuff and then the overlaps you're going to want to watch out for. Oh, the only other thing he does is animate shadows. He'll just spawn all these little ads on top of a random player. So every time animate shadows happens, you want to try to be in melee. But now we want to be out of melee because the orb is spawning. So we're going here like this. We're moving out of the way. And then we're going to get the slam on the tank. So we want to keep the tank nice and healthy. And then we're going to have shadowy decay here in a second. So here's the shadowy decay. We'll start using healing cooldowns. There we go. Now we're getting the orb into the animate shadows. So we're going to dodge the orb and then we're going to stand in melee so that the animate shadows, if it spawns on us, we're already good to go. I'm going to get the tank slam. Now this next overlap is the most deadly. We have the Dark Orb and the Shadowy Decay happening at the same time. So here we're going to get the orb. It's going to get sent out. We're going to dodge it, but then we're going to get the Shadowy Decay at the exact same time. So the explosion from the orb will happen at the same time that the Shadowy Decay starts, which is really, really painful. There I dropped like a barrier to reduce everyone's damage taken, and then the mage also used mass barrier. So you want to keep an eye out for that because it will. Uh, that's like the nasty overlap in this fight. And then we have anime shadows, so we want to try to stack up in melee. And here, we're going to have an orb, and then the shadowy decay will start, like, right as it explodes, so it's kind of another... I think it might do the tank slam, actually, first. I don't remember which one he prioritizes. Yeah, he does the tank slam here, so this is, like, the tank is in the most danger. And then now he's going to shadowy decay. So it's just that initial overlap, like you only have to deal with once usually with how much HP he has. Yeah, that's what we want to be mindful about on that boss. We're flying back up to the boat. You 
We've saved Merald, our champion. We'll drive the remainder of the shadowy lot from the city. I have this little mini boss to deal with. It's actually pretty tough, so you want to be aware of what he does. He does a lot of the same stuff that other mobs do and stuff earlier in the dungeon. So he does this tormenting eruption on two players. It's just like the other ability, except uh, this time it does a lot more damage than the, the regular mobs that we were dealing with. He'll summon these adds, and you just want to keep them CC'd and kill them. And then as a healer, our role is just to keep these players alive who are getting targeted by the tormenting eruption. Gonna save this other radiance for the next tormenting eruption. And this guy will keep spawning adds as long as he's alive, so it's just something you want to be aware of. Impress a defensive here, and maybe put a powered shield on the rogue. It's not enough. I have another tormenting eruption. Power radiance, mind blast, and then we'll just kind of spam. And now we just want to focus the adds. Looks like we're just going right into the boss with all this stuff, so I guess that works. The big things with this boss. We have Expel Webs. It's just going to be a little swirly on the ground that you want to dodge. It just targets random players. We have this frontal thing. This player is going to take a little bit of extra damage. Four, three, and then we two, have Erosive Spray. This is what we're using our healing cooldowns for right here. Erosive Spray. So this is where we want to keep the group nice and topped up. And then we dodge the lines on the floor again. And then it pretty much repeats. The rolling acid, it will bug. If you're over here on the left, it will still hit people um, who aren't in it. So you want to make sure you're far enough away. So usually just help the person out by moving a little bit this side. Move Five, over to the right so four, that they can be on the left. Three, it's just something two, to do with being in the air one. while the fight's happening. It's some kind of uh, bug with like the positioning and stuff. I'm going to paint up myself here since I didn't heal soon enough. Like there, the mage, we have the, the dot debuff, the erosive spray go out, and then he got targeted by the the um, little acid line thing, and that does like a decent amount of single target damage. So that's what you'll want to be careful of, is people getting kind of comboed by having the erosive spray go out and then get targeted by a mechanic. They'll take, you know, more Five. lethal damage than anybody else. Next, you fly off the ship, and then you want to follow the boss um, and collect these little yellow orbs that's how it's intended but if you're close enough to the end here you can just fly off the ship directly down here and just land down here and wait for the boss and then when the boss flies by you can use like one or two casts on him so i can like refresh my dot and then penance him as he flies by once he's right about here you can start meleeing him so like right now melee could be hitting him And now we're dealing with mostly the same thing, except the erosive sprays are going to hurt a little more. And then the other thing is we're going to get one new mechanic, which is the spinneret strand. Going to target two players. They move out of the group. And then we want to use, like, externals and stuff on them to help them stay alive. They get hit by a heavy amount of damage. And then it does, like, unavoidable group-wide damage right after. We're dodging the webs on the floor. And then we're going to get this erosive spray. So this is what we're going to use, like, a healing cooldown for, essentially. So I will just barrier this first one. Halo. I don't really have Mind Blast or anything available, so I'll just send it afterwards. Then we get Spinneret Strand, so the people... Oh, it's going to be the Acid first. Like, there, the Rogue was targeted, so I had to paint stuff him. Like, if I didn't paint stuff him, he was dead right there, because he wasn't full HP. And now he's getting targeted again. <laughs> Luckily, the paint up will last through that, too. We're going to have a Rose of Spray, so we're going to try to heal everybody up Four, as much as we can. Three, I'll probably use Rapture three, here just to kind one. of re-put Absorbs on people. And then we'll Radiance, Mind Blast, and Spam. Now we get Spinner at Strands again. Not going to use any healing cooldowns or Mind Blast or anything here. I'm going to wait until we get this next... Uh, Explosive erosive spray. Five, four, so now four, I'll probably press it. Three, two, one. Shadow fiends. And then we're just spamming into this. 
Halo at the end of it. As a healer, you will never get targeted by the spinner at strands. It will always target uh, DPS. Something to keep in mind. And we're going to get another erosive spray coming up. So we're going to try to get everyone topped up right before that. Five, four, three, Shadow Fiends. Two, Radiance. There we go. That is the uh, last boss. And that is the entire dungeon. So... Uh, thanks for watching this video. We only got, I think, four more to go.